Making your own NPM package is one of the best things that you can do as a developer. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own NPM package, how to bundle it and how to deploy it. I'm also going to be showing you some practices that I recommend using so it's easier to work with the package for you and any other developers using it or contributing to it. We're going to be using TypeScript to create the package and TSUP to bundle our code. TSUP will help us bundle our code into both CommonJS and ESM format from a single code base. So to get started, head over to npmjs.com and from here, go ahead and create a new account. If you already have an account, then go ahead and log in. I already have an account and as you can see, I'm logged in. So I can move on to the next step, which is going to be in VS Code. So in VS Code, go ahead and open up your terminal. And what I'm going to be doing here is authenticating our terminal with NPM. So to do that, go ahead and type NPM add user. And this will give us an option to create or log into an account using our browser. So hit enter to open up a new window in your browser. And I'm quickly going to go ahead and add my authentication code. Once you're logged in, you can go ahead and close this window. And back in our terminal, we are logged in. Now to confirm that everything was successful, we can type npm, who am I? And this should give us our npm username. So mine is under control, which is correct. So we can move on to the next step. So the next step is obviously working on the package itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first install all the dependencies. But actually before that, we're going to go ahead and set up a new NPM project. So I'm going to say npm init hyphen y and this will create a package.json file with default values. So what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this package. This is the name that is going to be used to install the package. So for me, this is just a test package. So what I'm going to say is say hello functions. And I think this name is available. So I'm just going to stick with it. We also have a description and this description is going to be just a test package. Now, obviously you want to set this to something meaningful. Next, we have the version. And this version is going to be obviously your NPM package version. So I'm going to start off with version 0.0.1. .0 now, as you make more changes to your package, you're going to be updating this version slowly as well. Now, the main field is the entry point to your package. In this case, this is going to be for common JS. And since we're using TypeScript, we're going to be transpiling it down to JavaScript. And for that, we're going to be having a specific directory called dist and this is where our javascript files are going to go so i'm going to say dot slash dist slash index dot js however at the start of the video i mentioned that we're going to be transpiling our code for both common js and esm for that to work we have another property that we're going to add called module and here we're going to set this to the path of the esm entry point file so in this case it's going to be in the dist folder as well and this is going to be index dot mjs so Node.js is smart enough to figure out which one to use based on the project type. So in case somebody is using the type of module, then it's going to be using index.mjs. If somebody did not specify the type or set it to common JS, then it's automatically going to stick with main. Now, another thing that we need is the types entry point, and this is going to be for type safety. Users can import types and stuff like that with our package. So for that, we're going to set types and this is also going to be from our dist folder and this is going to be called index.d.ts so this is going to be our declaration file now before i get to the scripts i'm going to go ahead and cover the keywords so the keywords is basically the keywords that is going to be shown in npm so i have a package called command kit and if i scroll all the way down you can see all the keywords over here so for me i'm just going to set the keywords to maybe test Obviously, you can set this to as many keywords as you want. Now, the author, I'm going to set this to under control. Now, the license, I usually just set my licenses to MIT because that's what most open source projects use. Obviously, you can set this to whatever license you want it to be. OK, so now we can go ahead and save our file and install the dependencies that we need. So in our terminal, I'm going to go ahead and type npm install. And this is going to be a global dependency, which is going to be TypeScript. So I'm going to use the G flag and install TypeScript. Now, because I'm on Mac, I have to prefix this with sudo and hit enter. Now with TypeScript installed globally, let's go ahead and set up development dependencies. So I'm going to say NPM install and use the D flag. And once again, we're going to install TypeScript 
and the next package is TS up, as I mentioned at the start of the video. So hit enter and wait for it to install. So our packages are installed. Now let's go ahead and set up our TypeScript configuration. So to do that, I'm going to create a file called tsconfig.json. And over here, obviously, you can go ahead and add your TypeScript configuration. I have some configuration that I like using, which I'm also going to have linked down below in case you're interested. And these are the settings that I use for my package command kit as well. So the main thing that you want to focus on here is the module. So if you're writing in CommonJS, then obviously you can set it to CommonJS like I did. Now, another thing that you want to keep an eye on is the target. So if you're focusing on older versions of Node.js or older browsers, then you may want to change the target to something older. We also have outdoor, which is the dist folder. You can change this to whatever you want it to be. Dist is most commonly used, so I'm going to stick with that. Next, we have include, and this is going to have our source folder. For that, I'm going to create a source folder, and this is where all our TypeScript code is going to go. We also have exclude node modules, which is pretty self-explanatory. So that's our TS config. We can save our file and close out of it. Next, let's go ahead and set our configuration for TS up. So create a file in your root directory, and we're going to call this tsup.config.ts. Now from this file, let's go ahead and import tsup. And from this file, we're going to destructure define config. And with this, we can export default define config. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and paste the settings that I use for my own packages. So you can feel free to copy this from the link in the description. So format is pretty self-explanatory. I mentioned this at the start of the video. We want to transpile our TypeScript code down to CommonJS and ESM format. We also have an entry point, which is going to be our source index.ts. And we can close out of that for now. And also DTS is going to be for our declaration files. So I can go ahead and close out of this file and let's go ahead and configure our scripts. So we only really need one script for this video and we're going to be calling that build. This script is going to take our TypeScript code and transpile it down to JavaScript. So I'm going to change this to TS up and that's really it. We've already configured everything we want to in these two files. And so TS up is smart enough to figure out what the configuration is. So just to test that everything is working fine, from my index.ts file, I'm going to export a function called say hello. And this function is not really going to have anything right now. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to run npm run build. And tsup has finished building our code. So inside the dist folder, as you can see, we have index.js. This is going to be for common JS and MJS is for ESM. And we also have a declaration file, which is going to have all the types and whatnot. So now let's go ahead and set up the structure of our project, something that I personally recommend. So the first thing that we want to do is figure out what the scope of our project is. What is our project going to be serving? So in this case, I just want to give users access to functions. In this case, one of the functions is called say hello. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and I'm going to create a new file inside source. I'm going to call this functions.ts. Now, obviously, you can create files based on your own requirements. But in this case, as I said, I'm exporting functions. So I'm going to paste this function right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set some parameters. So this is going to be an object, which is going to have first name, last name and age. Since we're using TypeScript, we have to set types as well. So let's go ahead and set first name to string last name. This is going to be optional. And this is also going to be a string. Age is once again going to be optional. And this is going to be a number. So in this function, I'm just going to go ahead and console log and I'm going to say hello. I'm going to console log once again and say your first name is and then give them their first name. Now, because last name and age is optional, we're going to say if last name then we're going to console log and say your last name is and we're going to go ahead and do the same for the age. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. But how are we going to export this? So what I usually do and a lot of developers do the same thing is from your index.ts file, the main entry point, you can go ahead and export everything from all the different files. So in this case, we can say export from functions. So we're basically exporting everything that the functions files exports. So in this case, it's just exporting one function and the index.ts file is going to take that function and it's going to export it. 
So the end user is going to have to destructure from the library using something like this called say hello. And this is going to be a function. So obviously this approach is recommended because people can go ahead and destructure whatever they want to destructure. However, if your library is serving only a single purpose and you want the default export to be a function on its own, then what you can do is you can take this and from your index.ts, you can export this as a default function. So inside your JavaScript, you'd usually just import it like so. Now, I don't really like this approach, so I'm going to stick with the destructuring and I'll use the export syntax like so. Now, that's the function that we're exporting. However, one thing that you may notice is that we have this type right here. So what if users wanted to use this type in their own code? Well, we might want to export this as a type as well. So let's go ahead and copy this and create a new file called types.ts. And from here, we can say export type, and we're going to export a type called say hello props. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And in the index.ts file, I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did for the functions files. So I'm going to say export from types. So it's basically going to export everything from functions and types as well. Now, since we have this type and we also have the same type over here, we want to avoid duplication. So I'm going to go ahead and use the say hello props by importing it from types. So we have a little bit of consistency over here. If users want to use this type in their own project, they can do so by importing it. OK, so that's all the code that I'm going to be working with in this video. So let's go ahead and transpile all this TypeScript code down to JavaScript. So in my terminal, once again, I'm going to run npm run build. And if we check our dist folder, you can see that our function is right here. Obviously, you don't want to deal with this file directly since it's transpiled. But these are the files that you want to push to npm. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and I'm going to create a file called dot git ignore. Now, usually what you do is with a package, you'd push your code to GitHub. If you're pushing your code to GitHub, then you most likely don't want to push the dist folder because that's transpiled code. So what you want to do is you usually just want to push the source code. So in this case, we can go ahead and ignore the dist folder. We can also go ahead and ignore the node modules folder because that's usually very large. Next, let's say you have some sort of environment variables that you want to ignore. So you can say something like .env. Now, since I'm on Mac, I'm also going to go ahead and add .ds underscore store. And this is a Mac file. It's usually there in every directory. It's hidden, but I'm going to add it anyway because I don't want this to be pushed to NPM or GitHub. So that's our git ignore. So basically, when pushing to GitHub, we're ignoring the dist folder, the node modules folder, any .env files and .ds store. We can copy this and we can create a new file, but we're going to do this for NPM. So I'm going to say NPM ignore. And in here, we can go ahead and paste this. And instead of dist, we're going to go ahead and ignore the source folder because when pushing to NPM, the source folder doesn't really matter. The same applies to the node modules folder and obviously all the files that we were initially ignoring. However, we might want to ignore some extra stuff such as the tsconfig. So we can add tsconfig.json and tsupconfig.ts. The reason why we're not pushing this to NPM is because these are usually just there for development purposes. Developers at the end of the day using your package don't really need these files. So that's our NPM ignore. So let's go ahead and save it. Now, one more thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a readme.md file. Now, any content that you write over here is going to show up in NPM like so. So if I go to the source code, and if I go to my readme.md, you can see that I have some markdown code. I also have some HTML because that is also supported in markdown. So I'm going to do a very similar thing over here. I'm going to add a heading called say hello functions, and I'm going to say a list of not so helpful functions. This is just a test library. So that's really all I'm going to add to this markdown, but you'd usually add a lot of helpful stuff such as how to get started with the library and you would even include link to the documentation. Speaking of which, if you do have some documentation that you want to link, such as this homepage link right here on the right side, then what you can do is inside package.json, you can add homepage and you can add the link to your documentation. So in this case, I'm just going to say HTTPS google.com doesn't really matter in my case because I'm going to be deleting this package right after. You may also notice that we have a repository URL. 
For that, you can set the repository and you can pass in a URL and this will be the link to your repository. So in this case, it could be github.com slash not under control slash say hello functions. Obviously, I'm not going to be pushing this code to GitHub because it's just a test package, but it's helpful for users who find your package through NPM to find the GitHub link. So that's really all there is to it. Let's go ahead and push this code to NPM. So I'm going to close out of this. And in our terminal, you want to make sure that your dist folder has the latest code. So obviously you do that by building your code. But since I have already done that, I know that it's time to push it. So to do that, go ahead and type NPM publish and hit enter. Okay, so it's asking me to authenticate my account once again. So just go ahead and do that by hitting enter. And I realized I got this because I have two factor authentication. So I'm just going to add my one time password. Once I am logged in, I can go back to my terminal. And as you can see at the bottom, it says plus say hello functions at 0.0.1. This basically means it was successful. So we can head back to our browser. And if we go to NPM and search for our package called say hello functions, well, we have a new package called say hello functions, and this is by us. And the markdown over here says a list of not so helpful functions. This is just a test library. And if we go to the code, you can see that our source folder was not included. It's just the dist folder. And people can go ahead and install this package using npm install, just like they would with any other package. So that's really all there is to this. If you make your own npm package, I'd love to see it. So make sure to post it in the project showcase channel in my discord. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.